Well, I don't know about you folks, but I'm still wondering about what really happened at the Miami Mall last week. Now, the official narrative is the massive police presence seen was due to a New Year's Day brawl between juveniles, and the reported 300 police vehicles were needed for crowd control. But you'll have to forgive me if I'm still a bit skeptical of the version we are being given. I mean, everything we've been deceived about, even just over the last, I don't know, eight years, we would be remiss not to say questioning what we're being told. Ex-users are still speculating about what really happened, and rightfully so. This incident could be anything, from a foiled terrorist attack to a hoax of some sort, some even opining on out-of-this-world theories. Unverified accounts have been circulating of 7 to 10 foot tall beings present. And while there's no concrete evidence to suggest that is the case, I did find it very interesting the biblical term Nephilim was actually trending yesterday on X. Pastor of Sunrise Baptist Church in Las Vegas and founder of Get a Life Media Ministry, Pastor Billy Crone, joins us now. Thank you so much for being with us, Pastor Billy. It's great to see you. Hey, you too, Allison. Uh, great to be on, and boy, what a topic. I know, right? I, I knew I had to get you on for this one because this is right up your alley. Pastor Billy, I'm not suggesting support for this theory per se, but I am fascinated by the biblical story yeah. of the Nephilim, otherwise known as giants before the flood and also yeah. afterward when God led the nation of Israel out of Egypt and into the promised land, right? Now, I know this may sound sort of wild and far-fetched to some, but the Bible actually does talk a lot about giants, and I know you've done extensive research on the matter. So yeah. would you please share with us what you know about Nephilim? Well, Nephilim, of course, is a term that comes from the Bible in the Genesis account, Genesis chapter 6. It's actually the Hebrew word nephil, and it means giants. But it tells the Bible also tells you in the same account, Genesis 6, where these giants or Nephilim came from. And they came from, as crazy as it sounds, a commingling of fallen angels, demons, and uh, the daughters of men, women. And so, as crazy as it sounds, uh, they got together and out came this, if you will, hybrid creature, half human, half you know, demonic creature. And the Bible gave it the term uh, nephil, which, and again, they did come out superhuman, super tall, big. That's what the word nephil, nephilim means, giant. And what's interesting is, as crazy as that sounds, I think that helps explain the severity of God's judgment with the flood. He flooded the whole planet, and basically something went on, and God says, that's it. I'm hitting the restart button. We're going to start over with Noah and his family, eight people, and let's try this again. But if you look at that account, as crazy as it sounds, well, of course that makes sense. Why did God have to judge the planet? Because mankind was being hybridized out. Uh, by uh, uh, demonic entities. And so God hit a restart button. Now, here's what's even more wild is Jesus said, Matthew 24, verse 37, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, before Jesus comes back and judges the planet again, he said, you're going to see a repeat of the days of Noah. And believe it or not, uh, what we're seeing in the news cycle and what's been going on for decades now with with aliens and abducting people and the experimentation and believe it or not the reports of people being abducted saying that they're commingling with humans and creating a hybrid all that is a repeat of the days of Noah which tells you and I guess what that means Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back wow incredible well I know that is perhaps very overwhelming for some, but that's very exciting for me and anyone who is a believer. Uh, I am very eager for that day. So I think this is actually some good news, Pastor Billy. Uh, while we're on this topic, I want to stick with this, you know, but switch gears just slightly. I think it's sad yep. that our world and, you know, even our own country is sliding away from morality and, and the Bible, right? And, and it's more headed towards this depravity and even the occult, right? I'm still yep. astonished that another conservative news network would make light of a psychic whose literal job description is to communicate and receive messages from demons. This happened recently on Fox News Network. Now, Pastor Billy, I know you know the Bible clearly and authoritatively condemns and forbids this. And I know you also used to be heavily involved with the occult and only thanks to Jesus yeah. were you delivered and saved from a life of bondage. But would you talk to the viewers of uh, the dangers about dabbling in and even some of the minor things related to the occult. 
Yeah, again, evil is real, demons are real, Satan is real, this is no joke. And I'm not here to glorify what I went through. It was the worst time. I never would wish it on anybody. But unfortunately, I was a skeptic of Christians. I certainly was a skeptic of the Bible. I thought this book was used to brainwash people. Uh, it's actually the only book on the planet that tells us the brainwashing that people are being received uh, from the evil one. And some of that brainwashing to think is that you can flirt and play with occult practices and somehow you're not going to invite demonic behavior or uh, get possessed, which is ultimately what they want to do. And that's what happened with me. I uh, got involved in the occult. Uh, I had made a pact with Satan when I was a teenager. Unfortunately, I went further into the occult and new age. And I did a lot of these practices that as crazy as it is, Fox News is actually promoting uh, with the tarot cards and the seances and and with the astral projection, the readings, the casting of the runes and the Ouija board and all this stuff I was a part of. And I can tell you firsthand, you may not think so, but you are actually opening up a spiritual door, a demonic door, and you are inviting these critters to come into your life, into your home, your family's life. And ultimately you keep it up. I learned the hard way. They will possess you. They were driving me literally insane. I, I tried to kill myself three different times because they're liars and murderers. John chapter 8, the Bible says. And it was only through Jesus Christ and calling upon his name when I was set free. But the crazy thing, Allison, is this. Think about that. It wasn't that long ago that that was common sense in our society. Don't mess with the occult. Don't play with the occult. This is bad. This is demonic. It, they, they're there to destroy you, okay? And here you have a major news company actually bringing somebody on thinking it's a cool thing. Now, again, it's not only uh, something the Bible warns about, but the Bible also says, okay, why is a major news outlet actually promoting occult practices on their network? Because the Bible tells us that in the last days that you would not only see a return of the giants and the Nephilim, the alien hold a delusion thing going on, but you would also see a world where the uh, uh, is going to be flooded with the occult. It says in Revelation 9 that in those times that people will not, they, they don't just turn away from God. They refuse to get right with God. And it says there, they will not stop worshiping demons. So our whole world is going to become flooded in the last days with demonic behavior, demonic acceptance, and unfortunately, all Fox is doing is helping pave the way for that wicked society. That's absolutely right, Pastor Billy. It's incredible to see how far we've strayed uh, from the Bible and how it's now just, you know, primetime news, apparently, to have some psychic <laughs> on uh, talking about demonic occult practices. It, it is really incredible and very scary for those who aren't aware of this because they are the ones yeah. who are the most receptive to receiving this. If you don't know Jesus, now, on that note, it's never my intention to share hopeless stories without presenting, uh, you know, what personally transformed my life and gave me a re real reason for living, uh, and that is right. true hope in Jesus. But Pastor Billy, would you please share with the viewers the freedom and hope of heaven that is found in a relationship with Jesus, with Jesus? Excuse me, uh, with a little bit of time that we have left here. Yeah, again, I'll just share what happened with me. Again, I was so rebellious and stubborn and uh, ignorant of the Bible, and I was a mocker and a scoffer. And yet this is proof positive that it doesn't matter what you've done. If you turn to Jesus Christ, he loves you. He'll save you. And and that's what happened to me. I was 25. I ran to my bedroom. I dropped on my knees. I was all by myself. And I simply said, God, if you want this life, you can have it. I messed it up bad. Uh, and then I knew enough to call upon specifically the name of Jesus Christ. And I did. I said, Jesus Christ, would you please save me and forgive me? And bang, instantly, man, it was like I was light as a feather. And I think what was happening was the demons were leaving me. I was possessed multiple times with what I was involved in. And I was set free. And it's been brand spanking new ever since then. And it's never stopped. But here's the thing. It isn't just that Jesus has come to save you and forgive you. It's the future, Allison, that he has won for us. He is coming back again. And that's not bad news. That's best news of all. The Bible says that if you're a born-again Christian and Jesus is your Savior, you're going to heaven, which is a place beyond your wildest dreams. We come back with him at the, with his second coming. We get to be a part of the millennial kingdom where he's going to renovate the planets to Garden of Eden-like conditions. And then it gets even better. The new heavens and the new earth, which is a time where there, it says there's going to be no more mourning or crying or death or pain, no more Satan, no more demons, no more liars, no, none of this occult stuff. It's all gone forever. So again, it's not just the forgiveness of your sins. It's the future that he wants to give everybody if you would just call upon his name. 
Amen. Beautifully said, Pastor Billy. I pray that uh, more people come to know and accept the Lord as their Savior because He really is our only hope amid all of this darkness. And that is what I'm most looking forward to. I know He saved me and transformed my life so radically. So I pray uh, that others can experience that as well. Pastor Billy, we are all out of time for today, but thank you so much for joining us and explaining all of this further. We really appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Allison. It's always great to be on. Take care. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.